Okay, the other uh, layer of the heart that uh, can become uh, inflamed also and affect the functions of the heart is the pericarditis. Now, to understand the pericarditis, just, uh, it's important to remember that the pericardium is basically, it's that double layer sac that surrounds the heart. It has a lot of good functions. So, it, uh, so this layer, it's the outermost layer. It does contain the heart and the great uh, blood vessels surrounding the heart. The inflammation of it, of course, the and when the end again, ITIS, that's an inflammation of the pericardium. Now, the pericardium has a great function. It fixes the heart, keeps it in its shape, in its uh, position, uh, prevents the excessive dilation, if that, if there's no reason for that. And, of course, you know, there's a lubrication uh, that uh, needed between systolic and diastolic. So that's, that's important. There's about 10 to 15 milliliters of fluids in the pericardial sac and when that number is uh, yeah, when that number increases that's when the problem is and also protects the heart from infection especially from the surrounding area you know if uh, lungs infections or any any infection in the thoracic area now what is the significance of this protective uh, or protecting um, sac to front when it's getting inflamed it will restrict the heart movement and of course the larger the inflammation, the more restriction it will imply, uh, you know, or impose on the heart. And um, it can be acute or chronic, depends on the etiology. So again, think of it as, again, this is the cover, this is the coat of the heart. And if this coat become very thick, become very inflamed and hard, then it will restrict the uh, movement of the heart, mainly during the systole. So you can think of that the, the preload will be low, uh, the cardiac output will be low as a result of low ejection fraction, the heart sound will be also muffled, and uh, basically anything that results from the heart movement will be restricted, whether it's the uh, cardiac output, whether it's heart sound, whether it's the contractility and so on. So keep that picture in mind. In conditions like uremia, for example, again, whether it's infection or whether it's, it's something metabolic, the problem here is the the fluid will move from the blood to the surrounding area and cause the inflammation or the edema of these uh, heart layers. So an infection, for example, there's an immune reaction to that. The immune reaction includes, you know, uh, influx of neutrophils. And also, the in case of metabolic uh, instability, it changes the blood concentration. And whenever the blood concentration changes, the osmolality of the blood, there will be an exchange and and and. Uh, uh, the fluid will uh, shift from the blood to the surrounding area, causing the inflammation. So let's look at the pathophysiology. So etiology could be, again, an, a viral infection, bacterial infection, um, new, new plasm, um, uremia, anything that can change the osmolality of the blood. And that can lead to inflammatory response where there's influx of neutrophils and other chemical mediators. These chemical mediators and the presence of neutrophils will change the, mer the permeability. That's a, that's a key word. We see it in a lot of inflammation. Whenever there's an inflammation, the permeability that is important to maintain the fluid balance between the intracellular and the extracellular will change. As a result of that, the blood will switch and that will lead to the peripheral inflammation and edema. Now, where is the significance of that? Again, it's a restriction of the heart movement. And again, the patient will have chest pain that is not it's usually pleuritic it it's not cardiac and it's uh, and we will understand again we talked about that how to differentiate it mainly because of the uh timing it usually it increases and getting gets, gets worse when the patient breathes and so on but as a result of the restriction of the heart again cardiac output can be low low heart in heart rate can be low muffle heart sound and all that will lead to the basically symptoms of low cardiac output such as fatigue and uh, pretty much symptoms like heart failure. So let's take, uh, think about these uh, manifestations. Okay, what is the problem? We have an inflammation that can lead to increase the friction. So the inflammation will restrict the heart and also will increase the friction because now the layers and the lubricant that was preventing the friction between the pericardium and the myocardium is no longer there. So as a result, as a result of that, the whole mark and the most common thing that it seems in 90% of these patients, what we call pericardial friction drop. That pericardial friction rub again, it's as a result of inflammation in the pericardium leading to friction. The sound of that, you hear it with auscultation, is a scratching, grinding, high-pitched uh, sound. It looks like, or it feels, uh, uh, sound like a leather rubbing leather. And 
the important thing, I mean, remember we talked about before the plural uh, effusion, and uh, in order to differentiate that from the pericardial, something had to do with, with inflammation around the heart, you will find that it has to do with the pulse because the friction is caused by, during the systole when when the, when there's a pulse, right? Whenever the ventricles are um, contracting. So it has nothing to do with the breath. I mean, it gets worse with the breathing, but the timing, the timing of the friction rub when you hear it using the uh, stethoscope, of course, and use a diaphragm of that stethoscope, you will see that it has to do, it, it actually relates to with the pulse or collate with the pulse. Okay, again, the pain, the pain, it um, correlates with the respiration, but the pericardial friction rub correlates with the pulse. So the pain here is usually progressive and severe, depends, of course, on the degree of the, of the inflammation. It's non-cardiac because it gets worse with the inspiration, coughing, or swallowing. Again, because of the inflammation and because of the uh, friction, the, this pain radiates usually to the left side, but it goes to the trapezius muscles more than, you know, uh, the arm, and the, but it can go to the neck and the shoulder also, mimic kind of um, the uh, heart, the MI kind of pain. But uh, the differentiation is that, again, because this is more of a muscular skeletal pain, if you have the patient lean forward or sitting upright position, there will be some relief of this pain, which is, of course, that's not the case in cardiac. Nothing will help the cardiac pain other than nitroglycerin if it's angina or um, having a procedure like cardiac cath. But in this case, again, because it's musculoskeletal, the position can help. So remember, keep this position in mind because that make sure that this patient should never be in a supine position. The patient should be in a leaning forward or upright position at least. Again, dyspnea, and the dyspnea here is not related to lung issues because lungs usually, lung heart are, are clear. There's no problem within the lungs. But it's just because of the intrathoracic, the whole um, intrathoracic, it's for, because of the bleeding, uh, sorry, it's because of the pain. Because the patients try to be shallow and breath and rubbed breath, so because every time they breathe, the pain increases. And the restriction on the heart will, you can see that in chest x-ray, in the chest x-ray, of course, you can see that as a pleural effusion, you can see that in ECG, we'll talk about that. And you can see the manifestation of low cardiac output, such as low heart um, blood pressure, the um, pulse will be weak and thready, and uh, so on. And again, so the signs of infection, you know, fever, chills, and noise, and leukocytosis, you see that in the CBC, elevation of white blood cells. So again, this is the autopsy of patient with pericarditis. Now, just because of this is very classical symptoms, you must know, this is a must know, it goes only with pericardial uh, effusion, and you can, it goes, you know, pericarditis comes from pericardial, so there's a match here, pericardial and pericarditis. Friction rub. So uh, you need to know the auscultation. Or you need to use the diaphragm of the stethoscope, and it should be in the in the left lower sternal edge, as if you are trying to listen to the um, APP uh, to the valves. Okay, and it should be during end of end of expiration. That's when the friction rub, the maximization, and again we said it correlates with the pulse and it's best to put the patient in sitting position leaning forward that's how you can best hear it there as we said it will be loud scratching grunt kind of grunting uh, uh, sounds uh, it doesn't change with respiration but it mainly correlates with the heartbeat to be heartbeat so it's a pulse and I will put an audio later uh, of how it sounds. The complication of the pericarditis. First of all is a pericardial eff effusion, which is accumulation of fluids around the heart in the pericardium. Again, that will restrict the heart and the uh, cl classical manifestations of it will be basically affecting the heart sound, so distant muffled or distant and muffled heart sound. Uh, blood pressure usually is normal within the pleural effusion. Now the fusion is not as worse as uh, the tamponade. Tamponade when there's a uh, excessive accumulation of the uh, fluids in the pericardium and that will change the intrapericardial pressure meaning that there will be high pressure leaving glycerin for the heart to refill so that's when you can you will see that the heart is really compressed and as a result of that the uh, heart um, uh, the sound will be muffled and distance there will be tachycardia and decreased cardiac output and uh, again, the, uh, there will be narrow pulse pressure, meaning that systolic and diastolic will be close to each other. 
because of the decrease in the systole. And uh, the major thing also, there will be a JVD. The JVD is, has nothing to do with heart failure. And that's why we say JVD with the clear lungs. This is the JVD that's uh, as a result of um, as a result of uh, basically congestion that is of a heart related okay again because the heart is unable to receive the preload that comes back from the venous return and so they there will be accumulation and congestion of the venous blood and you see it in JVD again one of the differentiation between JVD as a result of heart failure usually when there's a JVD of heart failure also there is a pulmonary edema and while well, well, in this case you see a JVD with no uh, pulmonary edema, the heart sounds will be uh, clear. And then the other clinic, uh, classical manifestation in cardiac tamponade is basically the, what we call the pulsus paradoxus. Now, as you know, the pulse and the, the systolic blood pressure decreases within a physiological number during inspiration. Again, remember we talked about the relationship between the heart and the lungs that when the lungs are inflated, that means that the heart will be partially compressed and that's why the systolic blood pressure during inspiration is slightly lower than it during exhalation by 5 to 10. However, that is physiological and that doesn't cause any problem. But now, in addition to the inflation, inflation uh, or, or, uh, of the lungs, in addition to that restriction on the heart, that physiological normal restriction of the heart during inspiration, now we have more restriction, That's it's all the time. So these two restrictions, the normal physiological one from the lungs and now the pericardial effusion together will decrease, will significantly decrease the systolic blood pressure during inspiration. And that's what we call, what we call the pulsus paradoxus. Now let's see. Uh, now you have a patient comes with, with this diagnosis. First of all, as far as history, you're gonna look and see from the high risk group what matches or what is the etiology. And then and when you do your physical examination, you must know what is specific. So the patient, the most common symptoms that bring the patient to ER is basically it's a chest pain that's from a, that's a plural, and it radiates so the trapezius gets worse with inspiration. So it changes with inspiration. So it's not of a cardiac origin. The second thing, a patient, 90% of the patient, they come with a pericardial friction rub, and now you know how to assess it, and now you know what the quality of that, and it's only, only, only causes when in a case of pericarditis. Again, the patient may have dyspnea and cough, as again, the patient uh, has dyspnea because they're, they're unable to breathe. They're trying to, to hold their breath, or breath, uh, their breath will be shallow and, um, and rabid because of the pain whenever they breathe. And the patient may have symptoms of um, infection like fever and chills and so on. Now in diagnostic test after we again we know the history of the patient we suspect again if you hear pericardial effusion rub 99% uh, it is pericarditis. So we'll go to some of the diagnostic tests. One of the diagnostic tests I see 90% of the patients uh, we look at their ECG and they see the, we will, you will see the diff diffuse or widespread ST elevation that now, you say, okay, well, stimulation, I saw that in unstable angina, and I saw, I saw that in MI, so what's the difference? The difference here that this ST elevation, it's not because of coronary artery problems. Number, it's because of, of restriction, and this restriction is affecting every wall of the heart. So what you will see is diffused, is spread ST elevation. You see it in multi-leads. You see it in, in, in several, in probably every lead. Now, the difference between this pericarditis ST elevation and the ST elevation that's caused by an MI Usually it's in a specific wall. So if it's inferior, you only see it in lead two and lead three, for example. If it's superior and so on. But when you see a multi, when you see a, a diffuse ST elevation everywhere, then uh, you this is most likely it's because of pericarditis. That's number one. Number two, if the patient has an ST elevation because of myocardial injury, patient will also have chest pain that's cardiac of, that's in, you know, of a cardiac origin, which is not the case in pericarditis. Another thing is the troponin. Troponin might be elevated in pericarditis, but it's not as the same way as is in the uh, MI. Okay, so whenever you see a diffuse is the elevation in multiple, of course, in addition to everything that we mentioned, the patient comes with pericardial friction rub, patient comes with the chest pain that increases with respiration, and you see this finding in ECG, as you see, there's ST elevation pretty much in every lead, then that's a confirmation of uh, pericarditis. Uh, other diagnostic tests, we can do an echocardiogram. In echo, in echo, remember we say in echo, we can see uh, pretty much everything. And as you see, there's a plural effusion. 
and pericardial effusion. This patient had both, but this is what we're looking for, the pericardial effusion. You can clearly see that in echocardiogram, and of course, through echocardiogram, we can measure a lot of things that we mentioned before. Another thing in chest x-ray, you might see a cardiomegaly as a result of the pericarditis, and also you will clearly see the uh, pericardial effusion. And in lab work, if, this is a, if the pericarditis is caused by an infection, you will see the white blood cells elevated. Again, if it's a, a acute and um, the patient uh, has a severe ch um, um, ch there's severe pain, and again, the restriction affecting the, circula the circulation of the coronary or the coronary circulation, then troponin might be elevated. And what we also do, we, uh, when we, we do what a procedure called pericardiosynthesis, we'll talk about it in a little bit. But during that procedure, basically, as we did in the pro effusion, we uh, withdraw or aspirate the fluids that's surrounding the pericardium, and we can send that for culture and, and analysis to see if it's a microorganism, if it's an infection, or if it's a um, neoplasm, so we can see if it's cancerous or benign. Okay, medical management, let's just put the things together. So if it's infectious, especially it's bacterial, uh, antibiotics will be uh, the prescribed. In pain, usually the pain, again, uh, we don't have to give opioid in this pain, you know, NSAID can help, but the major thing is to treat the underlying cause and decrease the inflammation, and that's, what, that's when the pain will subside. Uh, because of the effusion accumulation, until we get the patient to be ready for paracentesis, we can give them Lasix. And because of the restricted contractility, we can give the joxin. Now, if it's severe, we can give dopamine. Now, as far as nursing management, first of all, as always, you need to identify who's at risk, and you need to teach them to promote uh, the prevention of that. Then the other thing, you need to understand the clinical manifestation based on your understanding of pathophysiology. And another thing, you should be able to, again, uh, identify and, and make sure that you can know what's cl the clinical manifestation of common complications. So we said the two major common complications of pericarditis is pericardial effusion and cardiac tamponade. So you need to understand the uh, clinical manifestation that differentiate these two conditions. Another thing is you are expected to know how to perform the, per the physical examination and be able to interpret the findings. For, and mainly how to differentiate fractional, um, precardial friction drop and muffled heart sound and pulse paradoxes. Now, as far as management, again, uh, again, uh, you need to um, understand and analyze the diagnostic procedure, what is classical for pericarditis, for example, the diffuse ST elevation in ACG. As far as pain management, the major thing is to have the patient upright position, never, never put the patient in supine position, and NSAID will take care of the pain until we are able to perform pericardiosynthesis. And um, I will add a, a have, um, I'll add a YouTube video of pericardiosynthesis. So, and you need to see that. So you need to know exactly what happens in this procedure.